I'm David Harvey and welcome to Harvey's of Whitney. We're an old established family business going back some 70 years and in this masterclass video you'll see some of the beautiful pieces which I deal in and I will try to put them into their historical context. Make sure you subscribe to this channel to get notifications of future masterclass videos. Click the link below to subscribe to our free newsletter packed full of details of fresh acquisitions and news from the antiques trade. A couple of weeks ago in my newsletter I asked the question what masterclass would you like us to do for you? And the suggestion came back that doing a masterclass on a clock or a few clocks would be of interest. So we decided to show you a couple of clocks that are currently in stock and let you know how we feel about it. When I first saw this particular long case clock, I'm afraid it was emotional. I fell in love with it. It is just the most stunning long case clock. It's George III period. It was made in about 1775, 1780. It's signed on the dial, lot barwise, cockermouth. So it's a North Country clock. It's a North Country clock that was made to the designs that were current at the time, Thomas Chippendale and the such like. And you can see all the iconography of architecture, design and so on in this. The case is mahogany, but it's not just any old mahogany. This wonderful flame figuring on the panels with the little herringbone checker banding going around there and again on the base panel and again here on the styles with this lovely fan inlay there and there fluting and stop fluting as we've seen on other pieces here and there as well the columns here fluted and up in the top these panels that are repeated on the sides are eglemise glass that's glass that is painted from behind so obviously the very fine detail goes on first with the background colour going on last. So what have we got? The clock has an eight day movement, strikes the hours on one bell. When I talk about a clock having an eight day movement, there is a specific reason for that. The earliest of clocks were wound by pulling on a string on a rope at the other end of which was attached a weight. And as you pulled the rope down, so the weight traveled up and would then power the clock for 30 hours on the way down. That was the earliest sort of clocks. Sometimes the rope was a chain, but that was the principle. As we go on and we come towards the second half of the 17th century, so clockmakers started using more sophisticated techniques and the movements had an eight day duration as a standard. And the standard eight day duration meant that if you knew that you were winding your clocks on a Friday or a Sunday, you just made it that or you would have your butler or whoever do that once a week. Occasionally, really fine makers were able to make clocks to run for 30 days at a time, a duration of 30 days, a 30 hour movement. And I have even heard of one clock that was made that needed winding only once a year. So there we go. Eight day movements were standard by the time this clock was made. But it also has the phases of the moon in the arch. And you can see the moon waning here. Why is that important? Well, this might well have belonged to a merchant. And a merchant importing goods from abroad would need to know when the tides were high and when they were low, which of course is a function of the moon, hence the lunar calendar being so important on a clock like this. But not only does it have the lunar calendar, it also has the normal calendar around the ring here. As you can see, this hand here is pointing to today's date, which is the 8th. And you've also got these lovely bits of fruit in the corner, the strawberries there, and I think these are probably plums there. We know that the dial was by Wilson of Birmingham and it has this blind fretwork here. The gilded patere there on the swan neck pediment. 
Most of all though, it's the composition of the whole piece. When I saw it, it was from across a room. and I just had to have this clock. It had to come and live with me, if only for a short while. It is just a beautiful example. Everything about it just works perfectly. The tick-tock of a clock. It's the heartbeat of a home. But of course clocks come in all shapes and sizes. So moving from the long case clock, we can come down and look at this bracket clock here. This is signed on the dial, Alexander Cumming of London, and it's numbered 411. Now this one dates from about 1790. Again, it's a mahogany case. It's a very London clock. It has the hours, the minutes, and what we call a sweep second hand. You'll notice that goes right the way around in just one minute exactly. It has an eight day movement. It strikes the hours on one bell, but it has what we call a pull repeat on the side. The idea of which was that if you woke up in the middle of the night, you didn't have to light a candle in order to see what the time was. If you just pulled that, it would strike the hour gone by. So we know that it's between one o'clock and two o'clock. A very beautiful bracket clock in lovely condition, made by an interesting man. Alexander Cumming was a Scottish engineer and clockmaker. He also took out a patent on the first S-Bend to be used in a water closet. So there we go, a man of many talents, one of which was making clocks. I do hope you have enjoyed viewing this video and there will be follow-up videos with discussions and fresh stock items as they become available. Make sure you subscribe to this channel to get news of future editions. Click the link below to subscribe to our free regular e-newsletter with further images of fresh acquisitions as well as free invitations to antiques fairs and exhibitions. Thank you.